this third spleen examination. So again, if we ask you an exam, please do the spleen examination. Do the same basics, introduce yourself, ask the patient name, age, take a short history, okay, and then start the examination. So here, <coughs> you should start examination from the right eye leg fossa again. So tell the patient to flex the knees and take a deep breath, same thing. Now put a hand over the right eye leg fossa and your hand should be directed towards the axilla. Now, while inspiration you go deep down, wait, wait for a while and then during expiration you go forward roughly 1 centimeter forward. Same technique you follow, while doing palpation you watch the face of the patient to see the, any changes there. Okay? You go towards the left side and now even you can see there is a bulging over there, this one. See, let, let me show you here. Suppose you found the tip of the spleen, okay? then, then you try to feel the surface that the up, upper border, right? Then you will find the splenic notch. Then put a hand over the surface and try to feel the surface. Again, same characteristics like smoothness, hardness, you know, all those uh, irregularity or not, you have to find that. And one thing is important, you try to do insinuation. That means you try to, you know, put a finger deep below the coastal margin. See here in my body, so see I can insinuate easily because I don't have a spleen enlargement. But if there's a spleen there, it will prevent your insinuation, right? Then once you finish that, you just do the percussion over the spleen. Let me show in dummy. So you found the tip of the spleen, you feel the upper border to get the splenic notch and put a hand over the spleen and then you try to feel the surface, okay? Do slightly deep palpation to see the tenderness or not and see, this is the coastal margin here, try to go slightly deeper. It will not go deep down because there is a spleen enlargement. Let me compare to the other side, see here, here you can go deep, see, because there is no spleen there. So here you, you can't go deep, so this is known as insinuation is not possible, okay? And then you do percussion over the spleen, it will be dull normally, okay? So this <laughs> concludes uh, examination. But sometimes you will not find the spleen enlarged that much, you know. Usually the spleen should be at least two to three times enlarged to feel it, okay. But if you are suspecting splenomegaly but you are unable to find in this position, then you have to change the position. Okay, make the patient uh, right lateral and then directly try to feel at the coastal margin directly, see. So I now I can feel the spleen. If it is difficult to find in the supine position, you can examine on the lateral position to find it. Okay? So now, once you do that, again our question will be, what is your finding? You have to say, sir, the spleen is enlarged, the surface is smooth, there is a splenic notch and I could not insinuate over the spleen and it was dull in nature. This five point signifies this is the splenomegaly. Second very famous question is how to differentiate spleen from kidney, right? So there are a few points you have to understand. Number one, spleen enlarges towards the right iliac fossa and crosses usually midline, whereas kidney don't do that. Number two, whenever you feel the upper border, you can get splenic notch, you can't get that in kidney. Number three, when you try to insinuate, you can insinuate whenever there is a kidney enlargement, but you cannot insinuate if it is spleen enlargement. And the fourth one, if you percuss over the spleen, it is dull. If you percuss over the kidney, it may be resonant because the colon lies anterior to the kidney. So when the kidney get enlarged, the colon also get enlarged. So you are actually percussing over the colonic gas. That's why the sound may be resonant. These are the differentiating point between the spleen and the kidney enlargement on the left side. So now, the next question will be, what are the causes of splenomegaly? So again, always tell the very common causes, like you can say uh, liver cirrhosis with portal hypertension. You can say uh, like infections like malaria and calazer, or we can also say the hemolytic anemia. These three are the very common causes of splenomegaly. There are a lot of causes, at least you have to remember these three. So once you say that, then we'll ask you how you proceed again 
think what was the uh, clinical feature. If the patient had the fever, which is, which is on and off type of fever for a few days, in our perspective, in India, Pakistan, in South Asia, think about malaria and so on. So the history will guide us how to proceed further. Thank you.